Yeah, I'm Michael. So I started uh, liking watches because one of my cousins showed me a Rolex bubble bag since I was like 12 years old. Basically, what I find different is that every single vintage watch is so different in terms of conditions. Sometimes a watch is not even well documented. You know, you will find something very different, yet it's truly uh, authentic. I started off as an engineer working in the telecom industry and so forth, you know, I, I climbed the corporate ladder. But, you know, my passion keep creeping in, you know. I've been spending more time searching for watches than my real work. I decided, you know, why not I start a business that is focused around watches, you know, where I can put my real passion into the business. Well, I started by restoring some of the watches that I have. In particular, you see some of the bands become very sloppy. So I started to take apart bands and stuff for myself. Then I had to invest in a lot of uh, different machineries and tooling. So I was on the internet and saying, oh, why don't I offer this service? So I started posting on the internet, telling people I can do this restoration. I now have bands sent all over the world to me and people call me, I don't know, bracelet magician. That's a, that's a nickname that they made up on the service basically. So I am into the sports range. So this is one of my favorites. Rolex has been promoting their watches to go into extreme conditions. And this particular one, although not super collectible, but this actually was one of the deep sea uh, diving watch. It's called the Sea Dweller. It has a very breakthrough in those days, helium escape valve for the really deep diving conditions. My next one that I love is this very nice condition GMT Bakelite Rolex. So what is interesting is the dial. The dial condition, it's almost like perfect. This is what they call the gilt dial. So in the 50s, the dials were not printed white. Basically, they will print or plate the whole dial plate in gilt before applying the black paint. So it's in reverse of what dials are printed today. The third important watch that I liked is this, uh, what they nicknamed the Tudor Monte Carlo. It has a very interesting dial design. The funny thing is, during those days, this was not a very popular watch. But over the years, because they were not produced in the massive quantity, they are very hard to come by. Especially, this is the second generation. And this is a manual winding one with a value movement. The next one that I choose actually is not a Rolex. <laughs> it's this Breitling. Although not very expensive, but it has everything I wanted. It has a very big size case. It has a chronograph movement. And it is one of the first automatic chronographs. It's called a chronomatic. This one in particular has a very nice gilt dial, like the Rolex dials that I've shown before. Next in the list, uh, it's a very funny watch. A quartz watch, which shouldn't be in any <laughs> British collector's uh, hand. But this particular one, it's a Rolex Oyster Quartz. It's a quartz movement, but it's Rolex interpretation of what a quartz movement is. It's super over-engineered. Basically, it's a hybrid. It's half mechanical and half quartz. So you will see most of the mechanical parts in this movement shares the same design with their mechanical brothers. The reason I like it because that is usually the first one I, I pick out of my collection to wear daily. It's so easy because you don't have to set a time.